What's up, everybody? This is Seth Kniep, Kniep in a Real. Hope your guys' day is going awesome so far. Today, we're going to move really, really fast. I planned this out very specifically for you. I keep getting questions about what do I do when I reach a bottleneck? We have a lot of Just One Dime warriors who are succeeding as in they're doing 5,000 a month or 2,000 or 10,000, but they get to that point where their inventory runs out, they're short in cash flow. How do I break out of that? How do you get to that next level? And this is a good problem. If you're selling an Amazon and you're struggling with cash flow, you're struggling with launches for the, the next product you want to launch and how to manage that inventory, inventory cash flow become the two beasts in the room that will bottleneck the heck out of your business. Today, I'm going to show you tactics that work for me. This is how my wife and I reached beyond a million dollars and then beyond that. Many people ask me this question. They say, Seth, share your screenshots, show us of your store. I've shared them many times. We did three and a half million dollars revenue last year, total, like a little over three and a half million. And that was at the most 60% profit margin on some products and at the least closer to 40%. So what I'm going to show you guys today is the tactics I've used on Amazon. They are not easy. If anyone tells you they're easy, they're lying. They're hard. They're difficult, but it will work if you think the right way and then apply what I'm telling you. And it also is going to have a huge impact on the product category that you are selling in. And I'm going to show you step by step how to do that. And I use the exact same outline that I use for Just When I'm Warriors because this is how I built and continue to build my Amazon businesses based on these five stages. I always go through these five things every time. If it's a new business, it includes start. If it's not, then it's find all the way down to grow. So stage one is start. Stage two is find. Stage three is build, launch, and grow. Now, for those of you guys who are just one dime warriors, I want you to go log in to your account and look at the find section. We just added 15 videos yesterday. They were recorded over the last several months. Yesterday, they're uploaded. We have a couple more we're going to be adding today or tomorrow. And then we're going to be including a bunch of embedded slideshows for every video, 80% of the videos as well. So we are increasing the content of the course. And for that reason, I have a special announcement for you guys at the end of this session. But first, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to walk you through the process that we use. And then I'm going to answer as many questions as I can. And hey, everybody. Great to see you guys. I see we have a ton of people here. All right. What's up, annoying guy at the bar? <laughs> I don't think that would annoy, annoy me at all. Okay. So first of all, guys, when you start your business, let me just share with you my journey. Okay. So we started selling on eBay. And one of the first items I sold were vapes. And I also sold urns that go around your neck and you can put little ashes inside and, and sell these. And they didn't do well at all. The vapes did really well until people started restricting what you can sell on eBay, especially if it had to do with electronic cigarettes. But the urns did not. So we started selling those on Amazon. During that time, we started selling books. We went through a house. We sold everything we could. We just wanted to generate capital and start learning how to do it. So if you're at the very beginning stages of this and you're wondering, is this for me or not? First, you need to decide if you're serious about making money. If you are, in my opinion, Amazon is still the fastest path to cash that is passive income. And it's a great launching point so you can launch your brand onto other platforms following that. So we started on eBay, then we started selling on Amazon. And I'll never forget the first time I sent my little cremation urns into Amazon's FBA warehouse. It made me nervous. I didn't feel comfortable them controlling the fulfillment of the orders. But it got to a point where we started selling so many different arbitrage stuff on Amazon and on eBay that we would spend five hours, sometimes eight, even more a day. There's a table in the office over there. We would just sit there and package and ship and package and ship. And it was constant and it became exhausting. And I realized there has to be a better way. Option for people to do it for me. That means I need to manage those people. If they mess up, it's I'm responsible. Option number two, I pay a higher fee. Amazon fulfilled by fulfilled by Amazon FBA and Amazon takes care of it for me. I chose option two and I'm very glad I did. That's what we mean by passive income. Amazon fulfills the orders for you. You can also sell your product at a higher price as a result and your conversion goes up because there's greater trust people have when there's a prime option from Amazon versus it being FBM fulfilled by me or merchant the technical way. So let me go through this just for a few minutes, guys, and then I'm going to answer your questions. Number one, start. What am I doing with start? The first thing you should think about if you want to break a million dollars is be 
R A N D brand. Some of you guys thought I was going to be talking about alcohol and that add a Y on the end there, brandy, but I'm not talking about brandy. <laughs> if you don't think about brand, then I don't think you should think about breaking that million. Now, could you? You could. Do some people do it? They do. But if you're trying to build a company that has inherent intrinsic value, its only value isn't, hey, look, I buy and sell. I buy and sell. But it actually has a brand value. So people start searching on Amazon your brand name. Some of you guys in this room, I know it's happened to you. You shared it with me where they start searching your brand name. That's a beautiful place to be. You need to start with brand. In order to get your brand, you have to think, what does my customer want? What is a name? What is a word mark that would resonate with this product category? And it needs to be based on a product category. And when you get your trademark, this is very important, you guys, you're going to trademark your brand. It doesn't have to be your company name. It doesn't have to be your personal name. It's not your DBA or fictitious business name or trade name. The DBA, fictitious business name, and trade name are all basically the same thing. Those are for local situations. We're talking about the brand, what people think. Nike, I like the shoes. Whirlpool, I like the washer and dryer. Levi, I like the jeans. You get the idea? You must start thinking brand. This is extremely important. So far within the last year, we've had at least two Just One Dime Warriors that I'm aware of who sold their businesses for over half a million. They built their business applying Just One Dime training and they sold it. How did they do that? Because they thought brand, they built up a network of people and someone else said, I want that. Everything's set up and ready to go. And so they sold them the business and cashed out big time. So start with brand. You must, and you need to trademark the brand as soon as you can, because it'll take eight to 12 months to get it approved. Once it's approved, you get a number, you place that into your brand registry application. When Amazon approves it, in my experience, 99% of the time they do. I've trademarked multiple brands now in brand registry. And now you're in the brand registry, you have control over the content of your listing. So if someone hijacks it, Amazon's much quicker to respond. If someone does a so-called copyright infringement claim or you know a patent claim or this is inauthentic, you're like, how is it inauthentic? It's made of glass. What is fake glass? You know, <laughs> there's some crazy people out there. Amazon will protect you so much more. You fulfill you fill out the copyright infringement claim, you include your trademark number, you explain the problem. And the cool thing is if you have a hijacker problem, it increases your chance of getting brand gated, which is the next step. So again, if you're thinking, guys, I want to become a millionaire, you need to start thinking brand. That's the long term. That's the long game. You will make money along the way. Think brand. Okay. Second, you're going to set up your company, take care of your accounting, taxes, and insurance. And I know this is not a popular topic, but I'm going to talk about it because it's important. If you don't set up your accounting and taxes and insurance now, it's going to be a pain in the butt later. Because you're going to get to a point where you're going so fast, you don't have time to think, wait a minute, was I supposed to collect sales tax? Wait a minute, what is this form I got before January 30 about my income last year, which was over 20000 That's the benchmark they'll use if it's over 20000 Am I supposed to be paying taxes on my income? You need to think about these things now, okay? So you need first brand, second, set up your company, take care of taxes. Now, you are required in the contract with Amazon to have insurance. It's in the document when you set it up. Most people don't. Does Amazon come after them? They don't. Did I? I didn't. Not until later. If you're selling baby products or anything people put inside their body and even on their body, I highly recommend you get liability insurance. It is not super expensive, even at least just a minimum of a million because the day is going to come when you build your brand and it has a lot of money and people's eyes turn into dollar signs like, I don't want to build a brand. I'd rather sue someone who has a brand. And so they sue you. And so you have insurance to protect you so it doesn't completely wipe your company out. Because if you wipe out the cash flow, which we're going to talk about in a minute, you wipe out your company. So those are the three most important things when you're starting. Build a brand. Get a trademark. Think brand. What is the product? And remember, guys, when you trademark, it's based on the product category. You can't just get a generic trademark that covers everything. I know some people try to use that generic one. It's 32 or something. Don't do it. It doesn't work. Okay. That is for services and you can't defend that in court. And if someone infringes on it, you waste the time. Your chances of defending are extremely low. So start with a trademark that's in a category like pet or baby or kitchen or textile or clothing or fashion that you know you want to defend. Okay. Start with your brand, set up your company. I highly recommend an LLC. 
over a sole proprietorship for liability reasons and then take care of accounting, get a good bookkeeper and accountant, uh, take care of your taxes, both sales tax and income taxes, and get insurance if it's a high risk product. That's the thing about making a million dollars. Now, you want to hear some great news? I didn't do any of these when I started. I didn't do any of them. You want to know how much money I lost along my way to my first million? $20,000. How'd I do that? Through a supplier. They sent me a shipment. It was complete crap. We shipped it in. We didn't check it. We just, oh yeah, life's great. It's good. We're making tons of money. This is so exciting. And all of a sudden, we start getting all these returns. And all of a sudden, our defection rate starts to go down, the return defect rate. You know what I'm talking about in Amazon. And all of a sudden, Amazon starts giving us flags. I'm like, what in the world? When all that was finally fixed, it cost us $20,000 and then some because of having to stop and do removal orders and all the time we didn't make money because of that. We didn't think ahead. We didn't think brand. We didn't think trademark. We just thought, I got to make money. So if I could go back, I would coach my freaking self to do that. Set your company up right on Lord of the Rings. Do not be hasty. If you are hasty, like, oh, I got to get this going. Oh, good. And you're all like, you know, like me on caffeine, it's going to screw you up. Okay. Don't be like me on caffeine. Be wise like Gandalf. Build it right. And in the long run, you will make far more money, my friends, and make far fewer mistakes. That's what I love about Just When I'm Coaches. We're teaching you not just out of our victories, but out of our screw ups. So you don't have to do the same thing. I'd rather someone tell me the stove is hot than go, ah, and, oh my, why didn't you tell me? See what I mean? Okay, you get the idea. Okay, let's start. Now let's go to find. There are three things when you're doing product research, three things that have helped me. This is how I became a millionaire. I want you guys to know becoming a millionaire is not as glorious as it seems. It's harder than it seems. Can I just be real with you? I don't feel all fancy because I'm a millionaire. I don't. I realize, huh, that was a humbling road. I had to get over a lot of my own screw ups. I had to accept that I fail sometimes. That's why I wrote here, fail your way to success. You have to be willing to fail, guys. Let me show you how. Okay, first of all, criteria. What is criteria to determine if a product has high potential? <clears throat> now, in Just One Dime, in our coaching program, we just released 15 new videos for the fine section. If you're in just one dime, go watch them, guys. These videos are worth their weight in gold. Okay, These are the combined research methods that millionaires use to find products on Amazon, myself and your coaches included. But when you do your research, you need to understand criteria. How do I know the demand is high and the competition is not too great? It's kind of low. How do I know I can build a brand out of this instead of selling a Me Too product where by the time I launch, everyone and his uncle launched the same thing because they're always using Jungle Scouts too. I don't feel very special anymore. And I just dropped $6,000 trying to launch this product, but they're all thinking the same thing. How do you avoid that? First of all, you understand criteria. You're not just looking at what is selling well, but how can I build a product that is superior that fixes the problems of the competitors, not just putting a label on it, an actual new product. One of my favorite illustrations is floss and toothpaste. Are they the same product? No. Do they do the same thing? Essentially, yes. If someone is selling toothpaste, I know there's demand for clean white teeth. If no one's selling floss and I come up with the floss with a new kind of way to clean your teeth, I built my product on, I built my business off a new product, but I already knew the demand was there. You see? And a lot of those keywords in PPC overlap. So you have criteria. Second, you have hunt. Now, there's several ways to hunt. I'm going to share with you my two favorite ways. Number one, start with keywords because that's what people are already hunting for. When we started looking for keywords instead of products, it changed how we think. People were looking for a way to clean their teeth. So now I'm thinking, how can I provide a solution better than anyone else? Versus, oh, floss is selling really well. Let me sell a prettier version. You see what I mean? That's very risky because why doesn't Mary Sue and Bobby McGee also sell the prettier version of floss? That's how you have to think. So think like this. How can I provide a solution off of something I know there's demand, but my product is so uniquely different that it even looks like a new product, even though the keywords on PPC and in the title bullet points back in the description are very much the same as other high demand products. You see where I'm going? It de-risks you. You know the demand is there, but the competition is almost zero. And that brings me to the next product, uh, the next method. Three of us coaches, myself included, decided to set out on an adventure 
and try a new way to find products to sell on Amazon. In my opinion, this is the number one way to find products to sell on Amazon. And I'm gonna share it with you now without all the tactics. We just released a video on this. It's in the find section, just when I'm warrior. So go watch it. If you run a PPC ad, if you buy products at Walmart or Target or anywhere, Kohl's, I don't care, Walgreens, and you bring them in and you sell them on Amazon. And I'm talking about, you know, just a basic generic product. It could be as simple as a calculator, you know, or a selfie stick or a pot or a cell phone case, and you run your PPC ads on that, you can use the PPC ads to find other products or similar products or versions of this product that people are searching, but no one is selling. There is no other method I know that is more effective for finding products to sell on Amazon. But Seth, what about doing it from other platforms? You can do that. What about coming with a brand new product? You can do that. I could tell you, okay, there are more than 10 people I know, 10 fingers, more than 10 people I know who tried so hard to go a different route by launching a brand new product who lost five to 10 to 15 grand because once they launched it, it didn't take off. Why didn't it take off? Because there wasn't demand. How did they know there wasn't demand? They didn't know because the product was so different. There was no demand there. So the risk was very great. And if you're limited on capital, you can't afford to do that. What would it be like, you guys, to find products on Amazon that people are searching, but no one is selling yet? PPC ad campaigns do that for you. This has become my new favorite method combined with Amazal, because I can do my data analysis off of there to find hunt for new products. Now, how many of you guys are struggling to get reviews? Just raise your hand. Oh, I see that hand. I see that hand. <laughs> I feel like a speaker at a conference. Raise your hand. <laughs> the answer is differentiate. In this, there are people launching products with no reviews and they start selling two, three, four, five, 10, 30, 40 times a day. One of our coaches just did this. He launched a product, it had no reviews. It's selling over 10 times a day. How? Because he differentiated it so well. When I go and I look at his product and I compare it to the competition, the value he's bringing is so much greater than anyone else at a price that is lower than the most competitive of the competitors, but not the lowest because we don't want them to think it's cheap. It's great value. You can't help but want to buy it. How did he do that? He researched the competition. If you differentiate, I'm not saying it removes the need for reviews, but you won't be tempted to try shortcut methods to do that. And if anything has changed about me in the last year and a half, it is focusing more on building a brand. I will never forget the first day I was searching keywords on a product we were interested in launching and our brand came up. It was our brand, then the name of the product. I was like, wow, that is so awesome. When that happens, that means people are starting to trust your brand. And when they trust your brand, they'll just buy it because it's your brand. At first, they only buy the product because yours looks more viable. Once they trust the brand, they start buying it for that reason. That means you have a company you can pivot and sell in the future. Let me take you to the next one, build. Suppliers. This is one of the most challenging parts of succeeding on Amazon. Because if you have a supplier that you do not know, or have not talked to or could change out after Chinese New Year because they're in China and all the people go, the workers go south again and they come and hire new workers in in March or towards the end of February and all of a sudden your product does not look like product A, product B looks really different, that presents a massive problem. My favorite method for fixing this is get someone in China with feet on the ground in China you trust who can work with you and help you. They can literally talk to the suppliers for you. They can look at the products for you. They can do product inspections for you to a point now where you really have a middleman. You're not worried about, oh my goodness, there's this Chinese company way out there. I don't even know if they're a trade company or not. They actually work with you. Second, negotiate on the big orders, not the small orders. In the early days, my wife and I, we would negotiate on MLQs. We would negotiate on the freaking samples. It was stupid. Like, my goodness, you, you're going to really negotiate and save 30 bucks when this product can make you 3 million? We're burning the relationship, trying to save little bits of money when I should be thinking, hey, 
When we order 1,500 of those, when we order 10,000 of those, what is the best price you can give me? That's what you want to negotiate. If they accommodate to you on little tiny orders, they're probably a trading company because they're not in it for the long haul. They just want to get the sale. But if it's a real factory, they're like, why are you negotiating in this? Let's talk about when you have a big order, you see? So you have to think big, negotiate on the big ones. And this helps to fix the problem with inventory. Now let's talk about that for a minute. And I think, um, Adam, I saw your question at the beginning there, and I'm gonna answer it now. If you are running out of inventory fast, that's a great problem, right? Because you're selling well. But here's the problem, guys. You run out fast, so you, you're, you let's just say you have 100 left. You drop the price even more so it sells faster, so your BSR goes down even better, and you finish, and then boom, you close the listing. Which means when you come back again, what happens? Your BSR is really good, you start selling fast again. Okay, that's a little strategy I just threw in there for you. but. What do you do when you're limited on cash flow? Now, I'm going to share, Adam, my personal opinion on this. This isn't like a moral thing, in my opinion. I know Dave Ramsey teaches it pretty much close to that level. <laughs> I don't borrow money. I'm always cash flow positive. I've never been non-cash flow positive, positive since I became an entrepreneur. So I always, always, always use cash. How do you do it? Here's how I do it. Launch three products at the same time. Launch one that will bring you cash quickly. It's usually going to be a product that sells for somewhere between $15. Yep, I know that's really limiting on PPC, but it works if you differentiate well. All the way up to about $25, $30. Those impulse buys, they sell really, really fast. And you go quickly and you move fast and it starts generating capital for you quickly. And if you're already brain registered, and especially if you're brain gated, massive advantage. Because as you guys know, the hijacked products tend to be, have you noticed the lower cost ones, not the more expensive ones? You get it? Because they don't have a lot of money. They're, they're cheaters. They're trying to find a quick, fast path to cash. And so they cheat and they're only going to buy products that are cheaper and try to copy you and gain sales from the work you've done in your listing. So you start with an item that is more of an impulsive buy. That generates capital quickly. Okay. Then over here, you launch at the same time another product that's more in the mid-range. Maybe $40 to $60. This is one that's going to help build your brand. And it starts to sell. So you get this one over here selling 60, 70 times a day. You got this one selling 20, 30 times a day. And then you have one over here that may only sell three times a day, but it sells for 150 bucks. And this one, each sale is a massive amount of money. Now, what am I talking about here, guys? Guess which one I'm going to run out of first. You want to, it might surprise you. Usually it's the middle one because the, the small, the low price one, I purchased so many at such a great price. I got it for very low. Therefore, I spent more money up front. Therefore, I have a lot more capital and it's going to make me more money every time it sells. The one in the middle usually runs out first, but it's okay because if it runs out before I have enough cash flow to supply, I just close it. I still have these two going, but in most cases, not always, I'll have enough cash flow if I'm just talking about these three products. Okay, imagine, ignore, these are the only three, okay? Usually one will run out, okay? But I have enough cash flow to supply it quickly. It's kind of like stocks, okay? You invest in some that have, you know, they're, they're low risk, they're, but they're very long term, like 10 year returns. Then you have the more two year returns. Then you have the few days, like a, you know, maybe a month day return, and they're more risky. You want to run all three to differentiate yourself. So, what is my answer to running out of inventory and cash flow? It's differentiation. Now, this create, there's a problem though, guys, and you guys probably already know what it is. To do that, you have to start with a lot of cash, right? So here's something that helps. When I started on Amazon, I started on eBay, then Amazon. Then wife was selling on Instagram. We started e-commerce websites. This started to generate a cash flow. Around the time when we were doing about 20,000 a month revenue at anywhere 40, 60% profit margin, we were also starting to invest in real estate. And we were running condos. We had six condos at the same time through Airbnb here in Austin. We started at some point, we started hiring people to clean it for us. So all I had to do was literally go to my phone, communicate on my phone, money continued to come in. So each of those was doing around 1,000, 2,000 profit a month, the condos. And so those were running. Then we had our Amazon eBay running. And then over here, we started doing something else. What happened is we started generating all these cash flows at the same time. Now, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but here's my goal, guys. I want to teach you how to become a millionaire. I'm going to teach you how to build wealth. If you have the margin, and I had to fire Apple to do this, my friends, start another stream of income. If you have a great job that's making you money, 
then you might need to think about this, guys. Can I lower my living cost instead of borrowing money? Take some of that, even if it's just 2000 a month, and put it towards my Amazon business. We never lift, lived off of our Amazon business until we were very wealthy. We had so many different streams of income going, we didn't have to. In fact, the money we lived off of eventually was the condo money, the rentals, not the Amazon. Because I knew to keep the Amazon going, I need to keep putting cash back into it. So simple principle, guys, put money back into your business as fast and much as you can. It's like a kid. Imagine you got a kid here and a kid here. If you feed this kid a lot and exercise them, they're going to get big and strong. But if this one you don't feed very well, they don't get exercised, they're going to be weak. And no wonder it doesn't give you a good return on your results because you're not feeding them enough. All right. I hope that's helpful, Adam. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's talk about launch. So I got several things here. When you launch... Do not just think about launching on Amazon. Think bigger. Think Facebook, think Instagram, and think landing pages. If I could pick any three things that I believe are the most important for just hitting it with a splash. Like, guys, when you start, you want it to hit the ground and boom, a bunch of people know about your product. Start with Facebook, IG, and a landing page. Do giveaways. Run PPC. What is the point? You want as many people to know about it as possible. At first, it hurts, I know, up here, because you're thinking, I'm spending money, but I'm not making it yet, I know. But people are not gonna buy your product unless you start spending money. You have to get them to see it. So you spend money so they see it, so then you do make money. And as soon as they start see it, here's the most beautiful part, you guys. You understand what needs to change on your listing. It's extremely rare that anyone, I sure have never done it, launches their product and doesn't go back and tweak their listing at some level to make it optimized for conversion better. So when you start, before you even send your products into Amazon, here's what you guys need to have. A landing page, a card insert. When I receive your product, it's going to tell me where to go. I go to the landing page, you collect my email, and I'm also, I'm seeing this pop up on Facebook ads. And because I went to Amazon, because the tracking system Weird how I keep seeing the product that I purchased or was interested in on Facebook because it's targeting me because it knows I'm interested in that. And I start seeing these ads come up that are driving me to the page to get my information, to allow me to get the product at a discounted price, to build an email list, to build a brand. This is why launch and start are so connected, you guys. If you don't build your company in a way that increases value to others and build the network of people, you're lost. Let me put it this way. The number one most important thing about your company is not your product. It's the people because your net worth is your network. Okay. In the past, they would say, oh, how many houses does he own? How many buildings do they own? How many investments today? It's the people. If the people love your brand, do you ever wonder why I say people are the most important of the four main assets, people, time, knowledge, and money? Here you go. There's another reason. If people love your brand, your brand will sell itself. How do you do that? You have to get your product in front of their face. How do you do that? You run these ads, you run a landing page, you do giveaways, you run PVC. Now, let me just take PVC 20,000 a month before we ever did PVC. I was scared of it. I thought it was a waste of time. How did we sell then? We differentiated the heck out of our product. That's why I still believe that is the secret weapon to making money anywhere is you differentiate, you bring value to people. But had we run PPC earlier, we would have reached the million mark much sooner. Why? Because PPC does this. If I'm on Amazon and I'm searching for mangoes, and now you can see what I eat. This is like my daily food. I love these. I could eat these all day. I'm eating mangoes. Okay. I want to buy more. I go to Amazon and I search. If your listing doesn't show up on the first page of search results under at least a sponsored ad, then you're losing tons of money. Because over 80% of all those purchases happen on that first page over 80% you guys. So why isn't your listing showing up? If you think you're going to get to that million mark, but your listing is not showing keywords like your top five to seven keywords that are in your title and bullet points, you're, it's delusional. You won't. You have to get it on there. It needs to show up. Therefore, when this shows up, let's say you're selling mangoes because you like mangoes. Of course you do. You're selling these and I search and it shows up under sponsored. Now I'm going to go, huh? Should I buy this one or should I buy the competitors? And if I buy the competitors and a lot of people keep doing that, they click on your listing. Thanks for costing me money. I really appreciate it. But they don't buy it. Oh my goodness. What am I doing this for? You know, there's something wrong with the listing. You would never have known that if you had not spent enough money on your bits to get it showing up. Listen, guys, stop playing pansy 
with PPC. You need to get aggressive if you want to get data, if you want to make money. You want to be a millionaire? Think like one now. Begin by thinking like one. Millionaires don't go, oh shoot, I can't spend $30 a day. I don't have the money. I'll go find a way. Go start driving for Uber. Get more cash so you can do it. You see, you have to break out of that thinking of penny pinching. It doesn't work. You want to get to a million, you have to think big, my friends. Get over that super ultra conservative living. This is where I disagree with Dave Ramsey. I think he's great on defensive uh, financial living, but his all his strategies are defensive. They're not aggressive. I love the defensive part. He's affected me. If you look at my wallet, you won't see a single credit card. I have no debt. My house is paid for. My investment property is paid for. My Amazon business runs itself. Like literally I have no debt. So thank you, Dave, in all respect, but it's not aggressive enough. You have to get out and take risks. So you must run PPC. Why? So I can see your listing. Now let me share something. Most people don't know this. The number one reason for running PPC is to get your listing ranking organically. In other words, so it shows up without an ad. Because then when it shows up, then you can drop the budget. You spend less each day, but it's still finding new keywords for you, still getting you sales. And now that, my friend, is when you start making money. Here's the biggest problem people run into with PPC. You know what it is? Two things. Profit margins aren't enough. Differentiation is not enough. If you're not well differentiated and your special mangoes show up next to someone else's and this person has 323 four and a half star reviews and you have five <laughs> and yours isn't differentiated, why would I buy your mangoes? I might be scared of them. I'm going to buy this one, okay? So you must differentiate. Make yours look 10 times more juicy. So my mouth starts dripping with saliva because I just see them and they look so good differentiate your product. If you don't differentiate it, you will not make money. Guys, I'm going to say it again because no one seems to get this. Sorry, I'm a little uh, excited today. If your product does not look so amazing that of course, out of 100 people, 90 of them are going to buy yours to the competition, you're not going to get to that million dollar mark. You want to make a million? You must differentiate your product, make it better. And that starts up here, your brand, you're thinking big long-term. And if you're running short on capital, you go find another job to get more capital so you can get there. Because five years from now, you're not going to go, man, I'm glad I saved, I saved $200, not having to, or, you know, $2,000, not having to pay for a mold to differentiate. Now you're going to go, oh my goodness, I could have been a millionaire already. See, and that $2,000 was well spent. There's a lot of tax I can share with that, but let's keep going. Okay. Grow one more. And I'll answer your questions, guys, as promised. This is the final stage. And, and again, th this is not this is a super broad outline of what we teach. Um, again, if you're just one dime warrior, go look at the fine stage. We just added 15 videos. I'm super excited. We have five specific ways for finding products. I think you're going to love them. We spent hours and hours and hours and hours grueling over these to make them as clean and simple and easy and clear as possible for you guys. The grow stage is the last stage I like to talk about. Number one, you're going to optimize. What does that mean? You're going to take your landing page, your website, your Amazon listing, your eBay listing, your Instagram ads, all of them, and you're going to spend your time optimizing them. That means make them better so they convert better, constantly tweaking. I cannot emphasize enough how important optimizing your Amazon listings is. There are two things that always matter with an Amazon listing. Can I discover it? And is it desirable? It's discoverability and desirability. Discoverability means it's ranking, it's showing up. Desirability means out of 100 people who find it, how many actually purchase it? It's converting, okay? One is ranking, discoverability. One is converting, desirability. Those are the two things you're gonna be fighting for. Now, would you like to know the two most common reasons people will not buy a product? Its main picture was bad or its price was not competitive. Those are the two main reasons. And they're both really the same thing. They're about value. I'm getting enough value for this. Now, I'm not recommending you get into the fun price war that people love. You know this one before? You know it, you're not making any more money? I'm not recommending that. I am saying you need to provide so much value that your price is justified. And when you launch, I highly recommend you start with a little bit lower price and inch it up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then you're going to find when the sales start to slow. Okay, found the sweet spot. See? Okay. All right, guys. Oh, one more thing I'm going to add on here. Website, brand registry. You need to register your brand. Talked about that in network. 
you need to build your network. There should be an army of people who love your product and you have their name, you have their email, so you can provide them consistent value. After doing all of this, if there's any one piece of advice I would share is this. If you want to build your brand, you need to keep providing value to your followers, to the people who love your product product value They'll come to trust that brand that name it doesn't matter if they don't see your face they don't need to it's the brand and that built a legacy because long after you're gone your kids or grandkids can continue on with that business guys everything i shared with you is from my own experience combined with the coaches of just one dime these are the steps and i did not do them in this order it wasn't clean there were a lot of mess ups along the way but this is the most logical outline i could find to help you, to show you, that is how you get your business to a million, this kind of thinking, okay? Let me share one more thing. To get to a million, you just repeat what you did. If one product is making you a thousand, you add another product. I got 2,000, add another product, three, and you just keep doing that until all of a sudden you're at a million. It's kind of that simple, except each product is a different product line off the same category, so they complement each other. Guys, if you try to just crush it in pets and then crush it in kitchen at the same time, you're dividing your army you're not going to be as powerful. Why? Because your network here for pets is a different followers than kitchen. Therefore, you've doubled the time you need to take to build out your landing page, optimizing your website, uh, making sure your network is relevant, even understanding PPC. PPC is weird. It runs different for every product category based on what people search for. Even the price of the keywords is affected by that. Try supplements, try it handmade, and it's like night and day when it comes to the cost of those words. So you're gonna roll out new lines. So one of you guys mentioned you're in the kitchen category. You're gonna roll out new products for cooking or you're into baking, new products for baking. You're gonna expand it. Now people start thinking, huh, every time I see bake number one or whatever is the name of your company, I know that's a cheesy one, but cakey bakey, we'll call it that. Every time I see cakey bakey, I think they have awesome products. You know what they do? They go to Amazon, they search for them, they find them. And then they go, wait a minute, they have a website? Oh, they sent me an email. Oh, check this out, guys. Oh my goodness, I can get two for one on the website. And all of a sudden, they're buying because they love your brand, not because I was on Amazon, it looked the best. No, they actually love the brand. Let me just share one simple example with you. We have had the worst experience when it comes to frying pans. We don't even fry stuff. <laughs> Sounds kind of funny. We cook a lot of eggs. I eat eggs almost every day. And we never could find a pan that works well. Some of them, you're not supposed to use spray. Okay. And then you put the eggs on and like you can't get the egg to flip because it's stuck to the bottom. Then you spend the next 10 minutes scrubbing it. Like, hey, any kids you want to do some dishes for a while? I'm tired of scrubbing dishes. We've had the worst experience until we learned about stoneware. Do you guys know what stoneware is? Stuff's amazing. You don't use butter. You don't use pan spray. You just crack the egg. You cook it. And it's amazing. It works. It just comes right off. Guess what? I, where I'm going back? I'm going back to stoneware. It's already influenced how I think specifically about this brand because they create an experience, but not just that. When we received the package from Amazon, we first bought it. We bought it because it looked the best. Reviews were pretty good compared to everything else. And we were to try something different. That was when we first bought it. Well, once I received the package, took out the insert card, they gave me a very compelling reason. You will get a lifetime warranty in this brand if you go here and register. Well, guess what they did? They just got my email. Guess what? About once a week, they send me an email. You know what the email talks about? How awesome their products are and what other things they can do. And they include a lot of humor and funny things and cartoons that make me laugh. So it's actually entertaining. It doesn't just feel like your regular sales email. Guys, that strategy I shared with you is the exact strategy I use for my Amazon products. That's how you build a network. People fall in love with the brand. That's the long road. But in the end, you can break the million much easier and much faster. All right. I hope this has been super helpful to you. I have dared not look at the questions yet. I will be bold and look at them now. Here we go. Okay. Give me one second, everybody. I love you guys. All right. What's up, everybody? Give me one second. Okay. All right. So Adam Wheatley would love to hear your thoughts on cash flow taking on debt to scale. I answered that. Um, thank you, Antonia. Great to see you. Okay. How do you set good parameters for products in the maze out? What is a good BSR range? 5,000 and lower is what I would recommend for most products. Now, a maze out settings are already set. I wouldn't even tamper with them. I know the makers of a maze out well. I know how successful they are on Amazon. They know what they're doing. 
I've used this product multiple times. I've tried different things. The only thing you might, might want to mess with is if you have access. Okay, I'm going to share something super cool with you guys. If you have access to the product database, go look at the review section. Have it find you products that sell at least 100 times a day, for example, or 15 times a day. The top competitor is 100. So let's say 15 times a day. But the reviews are no better than two and a half or three star. You know what that means? Huge demand, horrible reviews. What does that imply? Not that bad. Then go read the reviews and see, can I fix that problem? That, my friend, can make you a lot of money. Right, let's see. My selling, okay, uh, Steven, Luis, my selling privileges were removed recently because when I started Amazon FBA six months ago, I did not know better. I was notified I was stopped four months ago. Can this be fixed? Luis, it can be. I can't guarantee it can be. Yes, many people have done it. In every situation that I've seen where someone had to get their account unsuspended or reinstated, they needed to give Amazon exactly what they want without admitting fault. And the second part of my sentence came from CJ Rosenbaum. That is his recommendation. This is what he's really good at. I've had my account suspended twice, one time on purpose to test something, and another time because someone claimed my product was not inauthentic and so I had to go out and prove my case. And I wrote a very long email and it's very descriptive and explained my plan of action and they reinstate. It can take months. You need to give them exactly what they're asking for. You need to give them a plan of action. Worst case scenario, yeah, you start a brand new account. It's against the rules. You would have to do it through a VPN, a different computer, different Wi-Fi network. You can do that. Many people do that. But that's your, your alternate option. It's definitely a grayish black hat trick. You can do that. That's up to you. You know, I'm, that's, I'm, don't put that on me if it doesn't work. But there are ways to do it, I promise. But yeah, you need to give them exactly what they want. If I were you, I would email them every single day for a month. Just keep emailing until they have to listen to you. All right. Great to see you, James. Okay. Great question, Zachary. Is it worth linking a UPS account to Seller Central if you only ship a handful of packages per week? So UPS, they're already giving you preferred rates through UPS as well as FedEx. For a while, it was FedEx only. Then it switched to UPS. Maybe it was the other way around. I forget. It was a long time ago. But um, yes, you can absolutely do that. But I don't see any reason to. If you're already getting the preferred rate and you're shipping to Amazon's warehouse, that shouldn't be an option. Now, if you are doing FBM, fulfilled by merchants, then 100%. Yeah, use your account for that if that's going to save you money. All right. Uh, because they're preferred shippers and you'll grow this number. Yep, that is true, Robert. What's up, Kyle? Good to see you. What's up, Robert? Um, I'm happy, my unkies, you're able to be here. Great to see you. All right, not trying to shift anyone. I'm no affiliate anywhere, but any, everyone in here should know about Jungle Scout and Oberlo. Great resources, all free. Thank you, brother. I haven't tried Oberlo. What's up, Vitili, truck driver? I remember you, man. How are you, man? All right. Okay. Uh, there are so many questions. I'm I'm going I'm trying to catch up, guys. Give me a second. I'm just going backwards trying to find where they start. Oh man. Uh Charlie Evans, how are you, my friend? All right. Okay. I think I've gone back far enough. Okay. What if I have my very original product no one can get? Do I still need a brand? You do because branding is first to protect you. Second, it's about marketing. First, you build a brand. You get a trademark because at some point, someone's going to step in and compete with you. So build the brand. Um, I would register copyright on your company's story. It's very easy to do. It's very inexpensive, even though you already automatically get copyright. Get a trademark. It'll take six, eight, 12 months to do, but it's worth it because your future self will thank you because the day is going to come where people are going to see it. I mean, think about it, guys. People get all worried like, oh, no, you're going to see my products. Well, we do see your products. They're on Amazon. <laughs> see what I mean? We just don't know. It's you. <laughs> so, yes, you do need a brand. Save money to invest your product in Amazon. I totally agree, Alwyn. And, guys, go and make more. Don't just save it up, but make more. Find a way to think, how do I get more cash flowing into my house? Like my daughter found for me this weird company called Lyft and you can drive. And I started driving for Lyft. Then I started driving for Uber. I did that to generate more cash flow. It, yeah, it almost killed me. I felt like a zombie. But guys, I would not trade those days for anything. Because you know what I did in the car? 
I listened to podcasts and I learned a ton. And people would jump in the car and like, oh, I try to get them in there. Like, check this out. And then we start having these entrepreneurial conversations. It was awesome. All right. Yes. Lower your living cost, guys. We all, not all, a lot of us live more uh, than we need. We spend more than we need to. Brittany, how's it going? Does Kimberly have any selling and Instagram training info? We'll love to hear more into that. She does not. She could teach a ton of you on it. Um, it's definitely something we'll be adding soon to Just One Dime and even coming out with a full-on Instagram course. But um, I'm proud to say she got up to like 15, 16, 17,000 followers on her other account organically, never spent a dime. I'm on Instagram. I haven't spent a dime on building my Instagram. These are all real followers. It's not huge. It's only 4,000, but these are real people. These are people I love. These are people I get to invest in. That I would rather have slower growing real people than let's go buy a bunch of followers. And some people do that. We'll have like 30,000. Like, how did you go from six to 30,000? And you go to socialblade.com and if it pipes up in one day, okay, they bought followers and those are fake. And that doesn't work for ads and optimization. Can you show us how to buy product from AliExpress and fulfillment by Amazon when you do show us from your computer? So I'm not going to do that because it'll show my personal information. But I can tell you when you go to AliExpress, they have a checkout page. You can enter your credit card. This is what you can also do on Alibaba. And literally, it'll charge that card every time you purchase or your debit card, which is what we'll use in our case with our business. All right. Let's keep the sense. Some people, when they do it to test the product or they're doing drop shipping through Etsy, and that's a great strategy if you can do it well. But if you're looking long term, I'm building a brand. I need 20,000 of this product. Yeah, you need to find a real supplier because if because AliExpress will give you small quantities but much more expensive. That's why I love Ewu, guys. You can get small quantities and still really good price. That's why I'm going to China in just a few weeks. All right. Yes, landing page plus Facebook ads plus pixels, 100%. Brenda, their shipping package, let's keep going. Our brand name is taken on Insta, not as a brand, but it's the person's part, forename, surname. They have no post, any advice. So I ran into this with Just One Dime. So there's someone who already has the name Just One Dime. And it's just a random person. I don't know what it means. They don't have that many followers. Contacted them several times. Would you be willing for us to use this? First, just ask. And if they say they no, help, okay, see if they'll let you do that. If not, here's the question. If you're building your brand, you're going to trademark it. Of course you are, Marion. You don't want your brand to be anywhere in any way revolved around something that's already being used if that person is selling a product in the same category. And guys, this is how trademarks work. If I am selling, if, if Bobby McGee has been selling mangoes, food, let's just say organic food, and his brand name is Adu, that's his brand name, Adu, and I come up with a brand name, Ado, similar, but very confusing, and I'm also selling organic, and I get mine trademarked, he never got his trademark, but he was using it two years before, he has first common, what's called first common rights, he gets to use his trademark, if he battled me in court, he would win, I would lose, he would get all the mangoes. Why? Because he was using it first. So what matters, Marion, is if they are selling the product in the same category, like pet, kitchen, um, health, you see what I mean? That's where you need to say, okay, should we change our brand name? But if they're just a random name like mine was for coaching, then I wouldn't worry about it. I would just use a similar one, but first see if they'll let you buy it from them. Exactly, Brittany, offer them a hundred bucks or something. Tell them you send them like a thousand dimes. Okay, what are the keys to differentiate a product from the rest? I love this question. I think this is the best question so far because this, in my opinion, everything on here, brand and differentiation are like married, they're together. You have to have both to make money. I know many of you guys have heard me say this, but it doesn't make it any less important. Study the critical reviews of your competitors. Focus on the two and three star. That's what I would do. Focus on that. That's how you build out a product. Our best products come from stunning those. There are other ways to differentiate, yes. Second, run a PPCI campaign on a generic product that's in the same product category. You might find that you know a lot of people, you, you, let's just say you buy a bunch of cheap ones at Walmart, selfie sticks, okay? You buy a bunch of cheap ones and you're selling them. And huh, all of a sudden you notice, I'm gonna run a PPC ad on this. So you start running a PPC ad on it, you're like just a hundred, right? It's not that pretty of a listing, it's kind of ugly. And you notice a lot of people are searching short selfie sticks. I would never have thought someone would want a short selfie stick. What are you talking about? Or mini selfie sticks, like really tiny ones, like for like a toy. What is that? And you go, oh my goodness, 
And then you go search on Amazon and no one's selling that. What did you just do? And oh, by the way, the impressions were high. You go and find a supplier who can build that. And now you're going to be selling a product that no one else is finding on Amazow or Market Intelligence or Helium 10 or Jungle Scout because no one knows about it. The, the, the weakness of every software research program is this. They're basing their data off of competitors who will be your competitors. Now, that's not bad. You can still do it. But wouldn't it be better to base your data 100% off of your future customers where there are no competitors yet? That's how PPC ads can help you. Just when I'm warriors, go to the find section, go watch the video, how to find products using PPC. I explained it step by step exactly how to do it. All right, Rita, my question is, do you know any company who will bundle your two different products from different suppliers in China and send Amazon FBA USA because I do stay in Singapore? Yes, I know 72 of them. If you will email me, seth at justonedime.com, I'll send you the list. I love it when I see a warrior helping a warrior. Marion and Brittany, they're like, let's make this happen. <laughs> All right, Alvin says, do it when you have 1,000 plus sale. Nice. <laughs> All right. Or any other way to do bundling and send FBA without extra shipping cost. So in other ways, you have both suppliers ship it to you in Singapore and you pay someone to do it yourself. You bundle it and then you send it to Amazon's warehouse. But that's going to require multiple like double international shipping. So if you're in Singapore and you're not selling in Singapore, then, yeah, I would not recommend that. But if you're in the U.S. and you're selling in the U.S., that's a great option. What do you mean by differentiated images or added accessory? So there are two kinds of differentiation. There's perceived and there's real. Both are important. Here's perceived, the pictures, the packaging, the color. And generally speaking, those are cheap. By the way, if you guys are trying to go cheap on photos, don't do it. Don't try to save money on photos. Try to get the best photos in the world because those photos will make you money more than anything else in that listing because people buy with their eyeballs. So perceived is how it appears, how it makes them feel. Even your logo is perceived. Even the insert card is perceived. Now let's talk about real value. Does this Bluetooth button actually work? Is this too stiff or does it move smoothly? Does it get long enough so I can take a really cool selfie with my family? But if it's black or blue or purple or pink, that doesn't add actual values is how it looks. Both are important. Now, why does perceived value matter so much? Two reasons. Usually it's a less expensive way to go if you're limited on capital. And second, it builds your brand as well as the real value. The real value says, hey, it works. It actually works. I like that. Perceived value says, it looks awesome. See, you need both for your brand. A lot of people, they, 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 they mess up. They're like, it's a piece of junk, but I'll put it in a beautiful package. No one wants a corpse in a beautiful package. And on the other side, some people are like, it works great. It's the best in the world. Yeah, but it looks ugly. Like, it, it's just terrifying to look at. You need both, you guys. Now, when you're launching your first product, if you're limited on capital, you can decide. There's all these data points. We teach this in our program. We have a full-on tool where you can organize and decide what are the most important differentiation points for this. Use that. All right. Hey, Adam. Thank you, brother. Yes, I'm on fire. <laughs> um, what's your opinion on retail arbitrage? I do it. My wife does it more than me. She loves it. I like it. I think it's extremely important if you're limited on cash to use it to generate cash. There are many Just One Dime Warriors who did arbitrage to get enough money so they can launch their private label product. You can start with a hundred bucks. You go and you find, guys, you know what's beautiful about arbitrage? You learn Amazon so well, so quickly. So it, ideal world. Okay, I'll share another tip with you guys. Check this out. This helped us to get to our first million. You ready? This is one of my favorite strategies. My wife and I were at a clothing store, one of those that have a bunch of discount options. I used to go in, I would bring my phone, this is why I love and respect Steve Rakin so much, he does this all the time, and I'd be like scanning and looking and okay, look at this, and I even go to a, a Goodwill and look it up, and does it sell on eBay, and like I've spent all this time in stores, and we found this very simple piece of clothing, it was just a shirt, and we absolutely loved the design. Well, who cares if you love it? It matters if the customer loves it, right? So we did a sod set. We bought it for the cute. <laughs> now we did look at the BSR and we found, okay, it is selling. It's BSR is low. It'll sell quickly. And it sold well, very well, decently well, like five or six times a day. And then we thought, you know, 
we could do a much better job on this logo and this design. We could get premium cotton. Why don't we private label the heck out of this thing? That grew into a complete fashion brand. So we used arbitrage to test it. Well, that wasn't original thinking. That was just to make money. But it grew into a shirt and then another and another. And all of a sudden, you have all these items selling its own brand. And the brand now makes money because we've invested in the brand. We didn't just sell a thing. We want people to say, man, when I see Yuzon, check it out, guys. When I see Yuzon, I know it's a good product. I love Yuzon stuff. Man, I'm going to dress my whole body in Yuzon. It's a style. See the difference? That's how, that's how you want people to think, you guys. Hope that's helpful to you. Sorry if I'm too excited, guys. <laughs> um, AJ, how do I join? Go to justonedime.com slash coaching. Okay, let me share something with you. Just One Dime Warriors, you're going to be very happy with what I'm about to say. For those of you guys who are thinking about joining, you're going to be very happy with what I'm about to say. And the rest of you, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, we are going to rate. I always feel shy doing this because I don't want I, I don't want to come across as one of those. Oh, yeah. Let me do a little marketing move to get you. That's not it. Okay, I'm just going to be real with you. We're going to raise the prices on all of our coaching memberships because we're adding three times the content. We have turned people into millionaires. They've invested twelve hundred dollars. Now they make over a million, some of them a month. Even if they're just doing 10,000 a month profit, that's awesomely sick, right? So we're thinking, wow, like we're really helping get people wealthy, which is awesome. Almost every day in some form, people say this or some form of this every day. Your program offers far more than I expected. You should be charging more. So we bought some other courses to compare and we found one that's like 3,400 and something. And it's about a third, fourth, fifth, the amount of content we're providing. I'm not saying that in pride, but I am proud about it because I love our team and our coaches. So we realized this is crazy. Why are we selling ours for 1,200? They're doing it 3,500. They're just marketing it better. Their perceived value is definitely higher. Our real value is higher. We're working on that perceived value. <laughs> See how it applies to all of life. I love it. So we're raising our prices big time. So I say this to you as a friend, not some stupid marketing tactic. If you're thinking about joining Just One Dime, you want us to help you get rich, you need to sign up because we're raising the prices big time. On the lifetime as well. Probably it'll go up triple, maybe quadruple on the lifetime. We're raising all the prices. Why? Because the value we're offering deserves it and allow us to do more and more as a company to help people. So again, if you're thinking about it, Go join now before the prices go up a lot. Because as soon as the course is done being updated, as I said, we just added 15 videos today, the price is going to go up. And this is your chance to join now. So if you go to justonedime.com slash coaching, join us before the price goes up. Now, I'm going to say one more thing, and I'm done with the little pitch. If you want me to help you make money, build wealth so you margin to do the things you love with the people you love actually be able to take your wife or husband on a date or go visit new york and it doesn't kill your bank pay off your freaking house pay for your kids college if you believe in that sort of thing <laughs> you get where i'm going we will help you our goal is to teach you how to build a business that makes you wealthy not because we're in love with money. No, we love people and we like teaching people and we like helping each other. And our dream is to build a network of people who grow together and do awesome, awesome things. When I was in Costa Rica just a few weeks ago, I was on vacation, had the opportunity to hook up with some Just One Dime Warriors, got to meet with a potential business partner. We're looking at this awesome, awesome product unique to Costa Rica. It's only in two other places of the world, but very, very far out where a place for cleaning stage potentially private labeling that product how did that happen it happened through connecting with people on youtube and that's the kind of stuff i love doing with warriors so that's our goal okay i'm done talking about a course but you asked there you go all right i'm gonna answer a few more questions guys okay why he can't read our comments and answer a question i'm trying alwin there's a lot of questions 
Seth, why not begin with one product, the middle one, and build with it your store and brand? Mariko, you can and most people have to and do, and that's what I did. So at the beginning stages, yeah, you're probably going to start with one if your capital is limited. Here's what's going to happen, though. You're going to focus so hard, especially if we're teaching you your product. If you do it right, your product's going to sell out fast, like really fast. And you're going to go, oh, shoot, I need to buy more inventory. Now, you can get a better price if you have it shipped by C and you purchase, you know, three, four, six, ten thousand of the items. But that takes three to five weeks to show up. So how do you plan for that? Here's my best advice, guys. If you're only launching one product, you need to take the top five to seven keywords for your product. Put it in Amazon, search it, find out what your top competitors are selling per day based on that keyword. Amazel will show you that. Our coaching teaches you that. I'm not going to go into it right now. Once you know, okay, of these top 10 competitors, they're all selling about 20 times a day. When I launch, I'm going to be in the middle of the first page of search results for sure. That means I'm selling at least 17 times a day. Okay, multiply out of a thousand products. How many days do I have? How soon will I need more inventory? How much money do I need saved up to do that? If you are not sucking any money out of your business, you're putting it all back in, you can plan it in such a way that it works. But here's the challenge, you guys. You have time and you have money, and sometimes they work against each other. This is why I talk about time and money so much. Think about it. You have the money to do the purchase, but the problem is if you do it by shipping by sea, it takes more time. So by the time it gets here, you've had to close your listing for weeks and you just lost cash flow. Like thousands of dollars you just lost because you had to close your listing to, to freeze the BSR. So then you go, well, why don't we ship it by express? That cuts into my profits. Now I'm going to make less money on this end. So I'll get it in sooner. I won't lose those days where it's closed, but I'm making less profit because it's more expensive to ship by air freight or air express than by sea. See what I just did? I showed you why managing money and time is so important. This is so freaking central to being a businessman or businesswoman. You have to know how to manage time, knowledge, money, and people. You know what's funny? Do you know what the hard, you know what the most important one is of those four? People. Do you know what the hardest one to manage is? People. You want to really know what the hardest one to manage is? Yourself. Myself. That people. All right. Hope that's helpful. How can I find a company to brand my product? There are companies that specialize in this. I interviewed someone for our advanced Facebook group, and that's all they do. They help build brands. If you will email me, Seth at just one .com, I'll see if I can find, I don't remember their name off the top of my head. It was like two months ago. I can see if I can look them up and find them for you. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Just make sure you have capital to do it. Leanna, don't you need to make sure your product is not already patented? You do. About 99.9% .9 of all products are not patented because either they're not patentable or the people didn't have the, the knowledge or the money to get it patented because it's very expensive, especially if it's a utility patent versus a design patent. But yeah, and, and the only time that's going to happen, Leanna, is if you're like, okay, this is a unique product because of the special hinge. Like it's not going to, with a real simple product like an eraser, very unlikely. So I do it, I search it. Anytime it's a product that has a little more of a complication or something unique. I'll just give you guys an example. We almost launched this product that takes a rug and you guys can go search it on Amazon and it keeps it from rolling. What it is, is if this was, check this, it's, it's really brilliant actually. I'll show you with this, this ugly rag. Imagine this is the rug, okay? So I know this is an ugly rag, but imagine this is the egg of the rug. You know how rugs when they sit on the ground, they curl up after a while and then you trip on them and then you fall on your face and you're really angry and it's not cool. So what they do is it's a little strip that goes right along here around the edge and it holds it down. And it was a very niche product. I love niche products. Like we've tried to find weird stuff like that. That's where we make most of our money on Amazon. So we searched it and we discovered, because it was unique, I wonder if there's a patent. And there was. And I even contacted the guy and he said he'd be willing to let me do the, you know, some of the online selling, but the profits weren't big enough, so I decided not to go with it. So you can go to USPTO. Gov, you can go to and search keywords for that product and see if it comes up. And Google has those as well. Right, DJ, exactly. How do you guarantee the quality of your products from suppliers? Great question, Rawan. This is one of the biggest problems for shipping overseas and biggest challenges, but there are ways to do it. 
the way we got screwed over, that's probably not as intense as that, but still felt like it, is when we ordered our second batch and it was nothing like the first batch, but we didn't look at it. We had them ship it directly to Amazon. So it caused a lot of problems for us. You have someone inspect it. They may send you your first sample and you're like, this is amazing. But then when they actually do the first production, they're using cheaper material. So you need to hire someone in China to go look at it for you and tell them exactly what to look for. They can send you like a 25 freaking page report on, you know, even like if there's a hair on it or a smudge from a fingerprint, everything. And there's a thing called a fail rate. Fail rate, that's actually really good because they're looking at any time, like even a wrinkle. There's not supposed to be a wrinkle. They'll, they'll, they'll notice it. And most companies will do what's called a 20% inspection. So out of every 100 pro products, they'll look at 20 of them. It's pretty rare to do 100% inspection. You don't need to because if they were trying to cheat you, you're going to find it just looking at the 20%. Also keep in mind, it's rare that in every time you have a product built, every single one is perfect. I don't, as I'm thinking, I'm trying to think, has there ever been a time when I had a product shipped from China to Amazon's warehouse or to me and then the warehouse where every single product was perfect? I don't think that it was. So if you, especially when you get big numbers, like remember our t first time we did our 20,000 order of a product, there was like a two and a half, one and a half percent breakage there but to us it wasn't a big deal because it happens we're used to it that's how manufacturing works and second we ordered so much our price was so low that it was better than ordering you know a thousand and them all being perfect but a profit margin would really really suck at that point thank you marion i'm so glad you liked the update on the just when i'm course thank you so much <laughs> awesome Brittany. very awesome uh, Troy says, do we need a landing page or e-commerce site? So Troy, if you're serious about this, building a brand, if you want to build a company, if you're serious about building a business that makes you a lot of money, brother, then yes, you do. Because when you file for your trademark, they're going to request pictures of your item. See that trademark right there, guys? You see it? They're going to request pictures of the mark on your item or at minimum on the package. They're also going to request pictures of it on your website. And they're going to ask, you're going to say, Troy, when did you first use this word mark or trademark? Word mark means you trademark the actual word. When did you first use it? And they protect you from that time on. So even though you're, you might have started using it in 2010, but you get it trademarked in 2014, you're protected all the way back to 2010 because you started using it then. See? First common rights use. So they're going to ask you also. I shouldn't say they're going to. In my experience, they always have. Show me your website with your trademark. So they can see this is real. This is legit. When you apply for Amazon's brain registry, they're going to ask for your website with a trademark on it. So there's like five or six different reasons you need to do this. Now, if this is intimidating, you're like, oh my goodness, it's too much. Join just one dime and let our web team build a website for you. They'll take care of that. So you don't have to think about it and you can focus on running your business or find someone to do it for you. Or if you're good with websites, do it. Just remember, every time you do something yourself, you might save money. You're also taking away time. So balance those out wisely, my friends. Yes, Owen, watch the reviews and sales volume, 100%. Yeah, I do these live because they're more personal, Owen, 100%. Thank you, Brittany. I'm so glad this is helpful. Do you need PPC for online arbitrage? You can do it, you don't. I've never done PPC with online retail arbitrage. So I, I couldn't give you experience out of that. Um, for private label, 100% you should. I shouldn't even say you need it. You can launch products without it, but you should. So you can, absolutely, 100%. I've seen Saad and Alan and other students do this to get their product out there more. Just keep in mind when you have the buy box, you can run PPC. As soon as you lose it, it'll stop. What you don't want is just keep in mind, if you're running the PPC and they buy another seller on that listing from another seller, you kind of paid for someone else to buy it. There are times though where you want to get it out there. What is the process and tools used in looking for keywords? So what I do, Stacy, is I do a funnel. I start with a broad keyword, like let's just say we're in the barbecue space and I just search barbecue on merchant words. And it gives me tons of ideas. And, that bring, and that's called a broad tail keyword. Then it comes up with barbecue grill. So then I take that one, I search that one. And underneath that comes up with more ideas, barbecue grill light. And so I search that one. And that comes with more ideas, barbecue grill light LED. See what's happening? What's happening is I'm going from very broad to very narrow. The longer the word, 
the more narrow the topic. Barbecue, grill, light, LED is very specific. So the more words they are, the more specific it is. That's a better converting keyword. Then I take that keyword, I drop in the job toolbox. I look at what's called autocomplete and it ranks it. And the lower the number, that means more people are searching for it in Amazon. Now that I understand it's ranking and I have an idea of its generic volume, not Amazon volume. Hello, all you software uh, programmers out there who say you have Amazon keyword volume and you don't. Stop lying about it. <laughs> because only Amazon gives that information. You guys heard me say this a thousand times, right? That does not come from Amazon. I don't care if it's Amazon. It's not I like ranking. It's accurate. It's from autocomplete. Once I know it's ranking well, that's when I take that information and now I drop it into a maze hour or some other tool to help me understand what is the data, how many sales are happening via this keyword per day. And then I start looking at differentiation options. So I start with in other words, my mind's open. When I do keyword research, it's like this. I know I want to launch products in health because I like to be healthy. I like to work out. Man, I would love to do the perfect push-up kind of thing because I like push-ups. Wait a minute. They may not want that. doesn't matter what I want. Okay, what am I going to do? Oh, I'll go to Merchant Words. I'm just going to type in health. Okay, so I type it in. And then the next thing comes up. And then the next thing. And I start digging deeper, deeper, deeper. And all of a sudden... I have a huge flood of keywords that I can use. I'm like, okay, now let's drop these into a maze out and understand competition. See how that works? That's how you do that. Step by step through just one dime. All right, please tell us the... No, it scrolled up again. You know, it's weird, guys. When I go through these chats, all of a sudden, it'll just pop up super fast and I, and I have to scroll away. Here, I'm just going to go to the bottom. What is the latest? Okay, can I start with a budget of 500? Okay, you can, many coaches just came out with a book on, you know, asking different Amazon experts their opinion. And I'm in that book for this question particularly. I think I'm the only person who recommends 3,500. Other people say 5,000. And I think that's because I have an awesome wife who always thinks about how to find faster ways without spending as much money back when we were poor. And so I think that way, not as in being defensive, but just being smart and running fast. And I think all the Just When I'm coaches would agree with me on that. 3,500 is a safe minimum. 5,000 is going to get you further. Yes. Can you do it on 500? You can. I did it on a dime. I started with 10 cents. What matters, what did I do with that 10 cents from now until I launched on Amazon? That was the, the key time, right? I needed hundreds of dollars. I'm trying to remember how much it was the first time I purchased that product on DHgate. Oh man, it was like six, seven hundred. So technically, that's what I started with six or seven hundred dollars. You can, it's just really hard. So you need something more like thirty five hundred. Five thousand is going to be more ideal. Do you have fear and doubt when you started? Salima, so, I get fear and doubt every day. And it's funny, your fears and doubts, they just kind of change. Now my fear and doubt is, man, can I ever get to more than a million a month? Can I even get to that? I'm not there yet. I'm proud of three and a half million in a year. Can I get to a million a month? Sometimes I'm like, do I have what it takes? And for me, the biggest challenge is time because coaching is not passive income. Amazon is. <laughs> and if you guys want to be a coach, please know that. Selling a course is, coaching is not. There's a difference. <laughs> All right. Uh, do I need a backup? Abdullah, get into a community who can help you. That's what, that's what I would say your backup needs to be. Get into a community of people who know what they're talking about, who can push you forward. Will you be at the Canton Fair this October? And if yes, how do I find you? Uh, Brother Wasim, I would love to, but I'm not going to be. I'm actually going to be in Iwu because we're teaching people in China. Every night, we, we, every day we go out and source them. We go back into the hotel room, a meeting room, and we teach them how to use PPC to find new products based on the generic product they just purchased in the Fuchian marketplace. I am so excited about this, you guys. I'm moving to another country and I will need my GS1 code for my new product. If I apply for GTI and exemption, is there a way to change it on your listing to a GS1 later on? You can, unless your brain registered. Once your brain registered, you're locked in with that code. So if you try to change it, it's going to ask you to start a new listing. So just if you're going to do it, do it now. But once you get it, you're locked in if your brain registered. The special offer should be the heads up on the price increase. Um, I'm not sure what you guys are talking about. Let's see, Seth, we be, okay, in 10 months, we've grown our business to over 7,000 per month. Brother John, I'm going to give you five, brother. Manufacture our own products. We are now curious about licensing agreements. Any tips on contacting very large companies for agreements? 
Um, yes, you need to find the purchasing manager who manages all of the negotiations for that. So we have worked a couple license agreements with companies and it's a very long process and it takes a while. Um, I love that you guys are at 7,000 a month and you're doing your own manufacturer. So let me make sure I understand what you're looking for. You want other people to sell your product, but you, you're licensing them to represent your brand. Is that correct? Is that what you mean, John? And huge congrats to you, by the way, brother. I need just one dime in my life. How about your off? How about offer your viewers a special offer till midnight since rates will be going up because of all the value? Yeah, and Eric, brother, the rates are extremely low as they are. I'm not going to drop them. They're, they're insanely good right now. Um, they need to go up because we're making people millionaires. So like, it's crazy, but it's awesome. And people keep telling us like, yeah. So um, find a way, brother. We would love to have you on the team. How would a small company like ours approach a huge company like Cummins Diesel? Okay, gotcha. To reproduce their logo. Oh, so you're saying for you to, I'm confused now. Why would you want to reproduce their logo, brother? I thought you were saying because you're the manufacturer of your own product that you're going to let other people sell it for you under your license. Maybe you could expound a little more. One of my products says, Elisha is in an extremely competitive market. Only thing different is better packaging design, Facebook ads. What should I do to break even? So if you've already launched, there are some people who all they do is the perception and they crush it. They just change the packaging and they crush it. The question is, is your product the kind of product where the look matters? If you're selling a hammer, you're probably not going to get a lot more sales for having pretty packaging for a hammer. But if you are selling jewelry or clothing or something to do with athletic wear, yeah, the fashion, the look is a much more important thing. So that's the first question I would have. Second, can it be done? Yes. If you've already launched, test it and try. One of our Just One Nine Warriors, all we did was add the color black to his product. You guys probably saw the interview on YouTube. And his sales tripled and quadrupled within days. All he did was add a color and that's it. And that was uh, didn't cost him a dime more. I'm joining you in a week, but I don't have so much time. Would that be a problem? Any advice? Abdullah, here's what I recommend you do. Give it two hours a day, six days a week. Two hours a day, six days a week. That's it. Just two hours a day, six days a week, do it for a year. I've never seen a Just One Time student not succeed. And by succeed, I mean 500 profit who are teachable, who took ownership for their own struggles. Um, when in you, I'll be there too. Uh, Wasim, I'll be there in uh, September uh, 16 to 22. All right. Can you show us from your computer? I have step-by-step. -step. I already answered that question. Uh, there's no dumb question, Adida. This might be a dumb question, but how do you send your product for photos to a photographer for the listing? So several ways. You do 3D rendering where you just take pictures and send them the pictures and they create the image 3Ds for you. Or you ship the product, a sample of it, to the photographer, have them take it, and just tell them they can keep the, the product as a tip. Yeah, you don't do it after it reaches Amazon's warehouse. Well, you need to do it before if you're going to open your listing. Yeah. Chris Robinson, 2000 a month on first product. Huge congrats. Everyone, congratulate Chris, please, and John. I love it when you guys share how you're succeeding. That is so awesome. I absolutely love that. Um, more than one brand per account. Yes. How can you sell one brand in that account? So what you do, Salima, is when you register your brand, it's going to give you several product categories. You can attach those product categories, multiple categories to that brand. Uh, no problem, Eric. No problem. Had no plan. And I'm glad that you asked, man. No problem. Show us how to drop ship from AliExpress to from Amazon. I don't understand when I'll tell. Maybe someday we'll create a course on that. I don't have a step-by-step -step process to teach you how to do that. It would be my identification Amazon warehouse. How do you break it down if you get overwhelmed with too many things in your head? Ideas have a ton to do and no need people to help you, but limited on budget. That's a good question. I'm going to close with this question because I think this question is so important. I I'm going to answer this very uh, thoughtfully. So we run 15 businesses and we have holding companies, business under businesses. Um, we coach, we sell on Amazon, we sell on eBay, we sell on Instagram. We have real estate properties. We have a lot going. I drink tea. I take time in the morning to pray and go on a walk. I prepare my heart for the day so that I am uh, mastering myself, which is the hardest thing to master. And then I just focus on the most important things. There's never a time where I get everything done, ever. I'm here because this is important. Yesterday, we updated the course because that's important. 
Um, so we just pick the most important things and do those and everything else seems to take care of itself. Um, we hire great people who help us. We get or build or pay to be built software that automates like crazy. That's a huge, huge, massive value. But yeah, it all starts in here, guys. That's the challenge. You must win up here. You guys want to become millionaires? You can. And I'll tell you right now, you need to start by believing. And again, as I've told you guys this so many times, you need to find a community who can help you move faster. I have learned so much from my fellow coaches. You wouldn't believe in the, even the community. Like, it's awesome. Like, we are better at what we do because of the community of Just One Dime. All right, guys, it is, whoa, it's 122. I got to go. But really quick, if you're a Just One Dime warrior, we added, please understand, we added 15 videos to the find section. Go watch them. Go watch them, please. They're updated. They're awesome. They should help you a ton. When the course is done being updated, we are raising our prices for Just One Dime coaching. So everyone, if you're thinking about joining, join now because once the price goes up, I'm not going back. People almost or some version of every day tell us through email or Facebook chat, you don't charge enough. Your course is doing so much. Like I spent 1200 and I'm doing 20000 a month now. That's like crazy, Seth. I agree. Because we are three timesing the course value, as in what we put into it, we're going to raise the price somewhat close to that, relevant to that number. So if you want to join Just One Dime, go to justonedime.com slash coaching, sign up. You will get an email from a coach. They will set up a one-to-one -one meeting with you to answer questions you have and get you set up for the next year of coaching. And one more thought, and this is why Just One Dime is awesome. You will get five to six hours of live group coaching every week for a year if you get one of the annual programs. In other words, for a whole year, you're being coached almost every day for an hour. And this is fresh, real-time coaching, like as alive as I am here right now, based on the latest information on Amazon. You will not learn how to sell on Amazon in a few hours. You will not just get a book or watch a few videos and figure it out. It's, it's, a, it's a huge, it's massive, but we break it down exactly like that, but far more in depth and show you step-by-step. Step. If I can help you make money, I will. That's our goal. We invest in people. We build people. My future has already started to happen on multiple levels, whether that's through Amazon stores, through investing, through new ideas in different countries of the world. That's our dream. It, it's Amazon is not our end goal, guys. It is so much bigger than that. So before the prices go up, this is not a marketing move. This is truth. Go sign up if you haven't yet. Justwindime.com slash coaching. Uh, Just when I'm warriors, I love you guys. Hope this has been extremely viable to everyone here today. I'm going to go hang out with my wife a little bit, hit the gym, go to a coffee shop, add a whole bunch more videos to the course. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. I love you guys. Bye.